Rebecca Yaros. A fan-made adaptation produced and narrated by Maddie Morgan and featuring a full cast. This adaptation is for fun and fandom only, not for profit. The Empyrean series and its characters belong to the brilliant Rebecca Yaros. Welcome to the Fourth Wing. Chapter 14 In the six centuries of recorded history of dragon and rider, there have been hundreds of known cases where a dragon simply cannot emotionally recover from the loss of their bonded rider. This happens when the bond is particularly strong, and in three documented cases has even caused the untimely death of the dragon. Navarre, an unedited history by Colonel Lewis Markham. Zayden! For the first time, the sight of him fills my chest with hope. He won't let this happen. He might hate me, but he's a wing leader. He can't just stand by and let them- There's nothing you can do, right? Wing leader! No. The Codex prevents him from interfering. Zayden knows it too. A muscle in his jaw ticks. But nobody knows the Codex better than I do. There's got to be an answer, a counter rule, an addendum, an amendment, something, anything. There's nothing. The Codex isn't coming to my rescue. Goldie? I guess that's a no on the flying. Okay, well, if you could back me up with your claws, I'd really appreciate it. You don't have any claws! Jack Barlow roars a battle cry and sprints toward me. I whip my blade across the rapidly closing space between us, and my dagger finds its mark. Right in the shoulder of his sword arm. My second dagger catches Tynan in the thigh, slowing but not stopping him. Orin swings for my neck, and I duck, nicking him in the side. But he pivots and catches me at my stomach. That would have eviscerated me, if not for Mira's armor. What the hell? She destroyed my shoulder! Jack stumbles to his feet, clutching the joint. I can't move it! One thing about having weak joints, I know where your joints are weak. You kill her! Still clutching his shoulder, Jack backs up a few steps, then turns and runs away. <laughs> you fucking coward! <laughs> Tynan jabs, and I spin away, then swipe backward, plunging my dagger into his side. Ah, you fucking bitch. <laughs> wow, such an original insult. <laughs> Did you come up with that on your own? <laughs> Tynan's sword cuts into my upper right arm along the direction of the bone. I peel myself off of his sword. Behind you. Uh, what? Satan? <laughs> I duck just in time to miss the swing of Orin's sword. Goldie snaps its jaw. No. And Orin flinches. So I. No. My blade rams into the back of his skull, and Orin goes down. Unconscious. You can't interfere. Tynan shouts at Zayden. No, but I can narrate. (laughs) 
This is confusing the hell out of me. Why did he intervene? He wants me dead. But I guess we're on the same team, defending the Golden One. Because of Sigail. Her narrowed eyes are focused on Tynan, who's trying to circle me. <laughs> and I'm not letting him get to Goldie. Your arm is shot, Soren Gale. I'm used to functioning in pain, asshole. Are you? <sighs> Uh-oh. I know exactly where I sliced into you. If you don't get to a healer soon, you're gonna bleed out internally. You're fucking dead. Bitch. Rules be damned. Zayden takes a step forward. Like he's gonna stop Tynan from killing me. But... Something lands behind me. Tynan's mouth hangs open, and he staggers backward, his head tilting so far back it's nearly perpendicular to his torso. Shade envelops us both. I chance to look over my shoulder to see why. The Golden One is tucked under an enormous scarred black wing belonging to the biggest dragon I have ever seen in my life. The unbonded black dragon Professor Kaori showed us in class. I don't even reach its ankle. The ground vibrates around me as it lowers its head, bearing dripping teeth. Step aside, Silver One. Me? Yes. You. I limp to the side, and Tynan breaks into a run. The black dragon's eyes narrow at Tynan, and he opens his mouth wide a second before... Tynan's gone. Oren is still unconscious at my feet. You end him. But he's unconscious. He would kill you if given the same chance. Yeah, well, that's a statement on his character. You're bleeding. Stop it. It's not that simple, actually. I got run through with a sword, like, right before you got here. So, you know what? That's actually a great idea. I cut off what remains of my right shirt sleeve, then wrap it around the wound... Holding one end of the fabric with my teeth as I tie it tight. There. Better? It will do. Do you bleed often? Pretty much every 28 days, give or take, since I turned 13. Let's go, Violet Sorengale. 
How do you know my name? Uh, I'd almost forgotten just how loquacious humans are. Get on my back. Oh. He's choosing me. Get on your back. I repeat like a fucking parrot. Have you seen you? Do you have any idea how huge you are? One does not live a century without being well aware of the space one takes up. Now get on. But the feather tail. I, I, I can't leave it. The black dragon chuffs. The golden one bends down, and then launches itself into the sky. The sun catching its wings. Oh, so you can fly! That would have been so nice to know 20 minutes ago! Get on. You don't want me! I'm not- I'm not going to tell you again! Point... Chicken. I hobble over to his leg. There are no handholds, no easy paths, just a series of hard as stone scales that don't exactly give me a foothold. The scales are larger and thicker than my hand, and are surprisingly warm to the touch. They layer into the next above them, in an intricate pattern that leaves no space to grab hold. How the hell am I going to get up there? You are a writer, are you not? That seems up for debate at the moment. Then, he shocks me to the core. As he stretches forward, his front leg becoming a ramp. Dragons don't supplicate. But here he is. Bowing make it easier for me to climb on. So I don't hesitate. <laughs> I scramble up his front leg on my hands and knees, even though my arm is fucking killing me. I carefully dodge the pointed spikes that run down his neck, like a mane. <gasps> Holy shit. I'm on the back of a dragon. I look for the seat, the little divot right in front of the wings, then Sid. Then I look for the pommel and prepare to brace myself to, to and there's no way I'll be able to stay seated. This is about to be the first and last ride of my life. My name is Tirnanuk, son of Lodgurim and Thea Clanfuil, descended from the cunning of Martin line. But I'm not going to assume that you'll be able to remember that once we reach the field. 
So Taren will have to do. So. Oh.